What is the significance of the fact that it has happened and what did we learn from it? Well, basically, Greeny, to his camp, decided that there was no reason to wait on this scan because the hip has performed so well and responded so well to the physical activity that he's been doing recently. And I think another key point in all of this is the fact that when you talk about the independent doctor that was brought into this, the doctor that they wanted to make sure you know, would be unbiased in all of this uh, from the combine rechecks. His name is Thomas Bird, and he's in Nashville, but he's the Tennessee Titans doctor, and he's thought of as one of the best hip specialists in all of the world. And so he's somebody that has a ton of credibility in NFL circles when it relates specifically to hip injuries. Uh, so that really does provide a lot of these teams that have been interested in this and wanted to know what was going to happen here a lot of reassurance about who was conducting this recheck. Everything looks great. They're going to continue to follow their plan uh, with the conservative nature of the physical activity, and they feel really good about where they're at right now. All right, Laura, that's great. And, and so let's we sort of look at this thing as a jigsaw puzzle, if we will. The last piece has been put into place as far as what the teams are going to know when they make a decision one way or the other three weeks from yesterday. And that brings us to Mel Kuyper Jr., of course, who is synonymous with the NFL draft. So, Mel, it seems we now know everything we're going to know about Tua's mm -hmm. physical situation. What do you think all of this means as far as where he will be drafted three weeks from yesterday? That's a question, Green. Do they know enough? Uh, do they have that first-hand ability that they thought they needed, but they didn't, weren't able to have? So I think it's going to be an individual team to take the Redskins picking it, too. How do they feel about it? Does Miami at five feel about all this? It's still a leap of faith with your medical staff projecting where two will be. And that's fine. If he comes back healthy from the hip and looks like he's on track to do that, that's great. But can he remain durable once he's healthy from the hip, once he's in the NFL taking hits, which was an issue at Alabama against collegiate football players? So that's an unknown that you will not find out until he's out there playing quarterback in the NFL. So that's that, just that guessing game. You're just going to have to be hopeful that the injuries are behind him. That's a thing of the past. And like I said, he can remain a guy that's out there from start to finish year in and year out in the National Football League. Now, in your recent mock draft, you have him at five, but you don't project trades. Do you think it is likely that he is going to go earlier than that, that someone is going to move up? Maybe it is the Dolphins or someone to go ahead of them and take him before we get to the fifth pick. Remember, when I originally projected that, Greeny, we thought everything was going to be normal. Well, it's been anything but. And at that point, I thought that might be a possibility for a trade-up if you have all the information you need, all the information you had from a team standpoint, an individual team standpoint, doing all their due diligence, meeting with Tua, all that. Well, that is not happening. So that's why I think at five, it's going to take a team like Miami decides, do we want to stay at five and look at Justin Herbert? And remember, we don't know if Miami has Herbert ahead of Tua right now anyway, Greeny. If they do, they sit at five, they take Justin Herbert, they roll the dice, they'll still be there at five, and nobody else will trade up to get Justin Herbert, quarterback out of Oregon. So I think because of the uncertainty in terms of Tua's future, I didn't think Washington at two would take him, and I'm not sure from which people you talked to in the league whether Miami would want to give up multiple draft picks go up and get to it when some in the league are just guessing that maybe Miami likes Justin Herbert maybe a little bit better. That's fascinating. Mike Tannenbaum said the same thing. You think there is a real chance that Herbert winds up going ahead of Tua? You know, nobody knows what Miami's thinking. This is guessing from outside people. Nobody knows what Miami internally is thinking, Greeny. But there has been speculation, even going back to Senior Bowl week, that Herbert was the guy they were looking at. Now, whether that's true or false, we don't know. That's what's great about the draft. There's unknowns up until April 23rd through April 25th. But I think when you look at Justin Herbert, he's clean coming in. He did everything right from the end of the year, the Senior Bowl week MVP, Senior Bowl game MVP, nailed the combine and the pro day. So I think for Justin Herbert, there's no concerns about that in terms of injury. We're to a, even with the great situation, it looks like so far coming back from the hip, everything being positive as Laura has talked about for about a month now, uh, even with that, I think that durability concern is why Tua now is a guy, maybe you just take it five if you like him, to trade up and give up multiple draft picks, I think is very iffy right now. All right, Mel, so well done. Thank you, my friend. We'll see you in an hour. Mel will rejoin us. Meanwhile, I've got a really nice group put together today, and you know what's going to put a smile on your face? Look at Rex Ryan, who's back with us for the first time in far too long, <laughs> and Orlovsky is with us this morning as well. I, and Rex, I want to start with you. Take us through. You've been in there. You've been in these rooms where these decisions are getting made, and when it gets 
gets to the nitty gritty. You're dealing with a player with the kinds of injury concerns that we have here with Tua. You know it as well as anybody. Take me through the conversations, and would you, if you were a team that needed a quarterback, would you be willing to take Tua with the concerns that exist on him right now? Well, Greeny, I, I think I look at it this way. I think this is the biggest gamble in the history of the NFL draft. And the reason I say that is you can't get your doctors, don't get their hands on them, all that kind of stuff. One thing we know, this young man is absolutely an amazing quarterback. He's got everything, all the intangibles, that leadership, uh, the, when, when it's the brightest, he plays great. So to me, I, I just think the guy's an amazing prospect. However, those injuries, if you're gonna just ignore the injuries, I don't care how he's working out right now. One thing I know about him, He's been hurt in college. Everybody knows about the three operations he's had. Really? Well, I've heard he's had five operations. So if that doesn't concern you, now look, I know a lot of people in the NFL, and I'm getting that information, you know, from them. So if he's had five surgeries, that's a major concern. And do you pass on him? Boy, I tell you what, if I only have one first-round pick, I, I, think it's too, I think it's too risky. I think if I have multiple picks uh, like the Dolphins do, they can probably take that gamble, and I think they will. All right, so, so you're talking, this seems to be the way this thing has moved in the last couple of days. The Dolphins should take him at five because they have multiple picks, but should not give up any of that capital to move up and get him. Dan Orlovsky, what would you do? Yeah, I disagree. I'd have to go get to a greening. I've been steadfast on that. I want to talk about the hits that Tua has suffered because the reality is this. The NFL protects quarterbacks way more than college football does. College football's protection of players is often tied to the targeting rule. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.